My parents raised me on an accomplishment system. Okay. So for every A earned, I'd get ten dollars. Wow. For every Not page me. of a book read, I'd get a penny. For every video sponsored, today's being Google Chrome, I would get capital to fund passion projects or increase my production value. I grew up being that is some spoiled that stuff. Hard work leads to reward. That reward usually being. I was candy taught that hard work is just hard work, so get those A's. But I get it. Not everybody has Asian parents to instill a work ethic in them from birth. So how exactly no, I did, just get stuff done? No money. Well, first, of course, I'd say. Hey. Hey. Would you like some candy? No. Go on. All you gotta do is turn in that paper. Get this delicious candy. Mm. Come on. All you gotta do is turn over that 10-page MLA formatted essay on the possible impacts of biological warfare, and that's all you need. If you want to get stuff oh, done, now I don't want it. One, you licked it. stop multitasking. Okay. Numerous studies have proven that multitasking actually leads to getting less done okay. throughout the day. All right. You have to focus on one task at a time. Okay. Now, in the days of that tech, actually helps. I'm going to do that. kind of seem counterintuitive because we have to use so many apps in conjunction just to complete a single task. Right. And we often get sidetracked by social media or side projects no, since we're me. so busy zipping around our screens. Got no friends. But I cannot stress this enough. If you actually want to be productive, mm -hmm. you have to focus on one thing at a time. Okay. Second, prioritize your to-do list by what's most important right. and make it results-oriented. Okay. So if today I say my most important task is to get some sketching done, I will put that at the top of my list. List and write out exactly how many sketches I want to finish. Okay, that's really specific. Whether that's one or three or six. If you make your to-do list results oriented, you get results. Okay. And finally, be realistic. There's only three tips? Oh man. I have definitely tried to overpack my Google Calendar with things without taking in real life necessities into account, like meals or relaxation or how long it takes to drive from place to place in LA. When you set an impossible standard for yourself and you're not meeting those, I goals, always do that. Then you'll find yourself less motivated because you're not getting as much done. That's as true. My my goal Versus is to get five subscribers. That is impossible. I should bring that down work. to two. You feel more motivated that night when you go to bed and ready for the next day's task. Okay. I hope this helps you get stuff done. And I hope it helps fails. me too. If all else fails, what? You you'll leave me? I'm Anna Akana. If all else fails, you'll leave me. Hi, I'm Anna Akana, and I'm here to help women everywhere not get raped. Because it's totally our responsibility, right? Right. I mean, you don't want to get raped, correct? That's why it's very important you know how to stay safe. It's the same reason we're taught to wear a seatbelt while driving or lock our front door at night. Because ultimately, your safety is your responsibility. You can't expect a hero to always be there to defend you. The best form of rape prevention is to assimilate yourself into society as a man. Now I know what you're thinking. Anna, rape does not just apply to women. This is true. So to ensure the safety of your butt, spread a rumor that you yourself are a rapist so other rapists will see you as a colleague. Hey fellas, how's them rapes looking lately? What? Yeah, you getting any good rapes, dog? Yeah, we're busy right now. Yeah. Busy yeah. thinking about the rape. Okay, we gotta get... Hey guys, oh, come on, bro. Give rape, me some rape, rape tips, yeah, dog. Rape. I just want to have rape from you. Oh. Yo, we're friends, dog. You know what? These run funny. Fast forward. We've been conditioned our whole lives to not get raped. My dad put me in martial arts. My mom gives me knives and pepper spray, and despite the fact that I like that stuff, it's mostly for anti-rape. Oh, what terrible parents you have looking out for your safety like that. You know what? My parents are awful too. They taught me to look both ways and don't talk to strangers. They were just horrible, oppressive shitlords. We're told by society, never walk alone at night, never walk down an alleyway. If you think you're being followed, make three right turns, because that means they just went in a circle. Never run upstairs if you're being chased, because then you can get trapped. Don't stop if you see a car seat on the side of the road. Hey, here's some nail polish that'll help you identify date rape drugs. Sport this adorable yet fierce keychain so you can gouge someone's eyes out. And on and on and on. You know, Anna, considering the fact that rape has gone down drastically since the 90s, maybe these tips are, dare I say, effective? I don't get you, Anna. You're against rape, right? Rape is what you're trying to prevent here. And yet you talk down about tactics that are shown to work. <laughs> what are you smoking, Tumblr? You know what would be better? If we just taught young boys that rape isn't even an option. Anna. Come on, come back to reality. We live in a society where rape is a class A felony. You can spend over a decade in prison for rape. 
celebrities accused or found guilty of rape will get shat on by the media and have their reputation tarnished forever. And men who are falsely accused of rape will have their entire lives destroyed. On Thursday, 21-year-old Catherine Bennett was found guilty of falsely reporting that Toth had kidnapped and raped her. Accusations that tarnished his clean criminal record, alienated his family, cost him two jobs, and even prevented him from getting his own apartment. Bennett later convicted of making it all up. She was sentenced to 35 days in jail, then an ankle monitor and probation. It is a stunning turn of events in the story that drew national attention. The Temple football player who was thrown out of the university and vilified on the internet after being accused of rape now says he feels vindicated that the DA's office has dropped the charges. When it first happened, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know where to go, you know. The Temple Owl linebacker in his freshman year was ostracized, stripped of his athletic scholarship, kicked out of Temple, and vilified nationally and on the internet. His accuser did it out of spite because he refused to have a long-term relationship with her. Everyone in my family thinks I'm a sex offender. They think I'm a rapist. Everyone does. Scott Espinosa was facing 35 years in prison. He was convicted of six felonies, including rape by force and pimping. Police said the victim was 14 years old. But she wasn't. In fact, much of the case against Espinosa wasn't as it seemed. The jury found Espinosa guilty. I was in jail for 589 days, I believe. Like almost 19 months. Espinosa said hard time isn't the worst thing that happened. His mother committed suicide while he was in prison. She was convinced her son was there for life. You know, my mom died thinking that I'm a rapist. can't give that back to me. Oh, and you think that's bad? Go look up the UVA rape scandal or the Duke lacrosse scandal and see just how far rape hysteria will go. Unless you've been living under a rock, it's abundantly clear that our society is very much against rape. Don't you think it's a lot more likely that rapists know rape is wrong but simply don't care? Well, according to Rain, yes. In a message to the White House, they stated that rape is caused not by cultural factors, but by the conscious decisions of a small percentage of the community to commit a violent crime. Further down, they write, by the time they reach college, most students have been exposed to 18 years of prevention messages in one form or another. And thanks to repeated messages, the overwhelming majority of these young adults have learned right from wrong and enter college knowing that rape falls squarely in the latter category. If we would stop victim shaming and slut shaming. I agree. And excusing a rapist because of the clothes his victim wore or because they were on a date. And I agree with that too. A rapist should not be excused for raping someone. And sexual clothing does not make you more likely to get raped. But you know what does make it more likely? How passive you look. According to law professor Teresa M. Biner, as well as Psychology Today, women who appear submissive have a higher chance of being raped. Rape is about power and control, right? So of course, a rapist would target people who easily give in. And studies have shown that submissive women wear more body-concealing clothing. And a rapist can notice that. So appearing confident and wearing more provocative clothing may instead lower the chance of being raped. Because I am seriously so fucking tired of being responsible for not getting raped. I'm Anna Akana. You stay awesome. I'm concerned for your fan base, Anna. You have a pretty big following on YouTube. Imagine if a few of them take your advice to heart and think, you know what? Anna's right. Forget self-defense, forget pepper spray. My safety, not my responsibility. Then one night they're walking home and are attacked by a rapist. I bet at one point they'll think, I really wish I learned how to defend myself. We live in an amazing time of progressiveness. In my life, I've had the pleasure of seeing a black president in office, gay marriage legalized, and two Asian family comedies on TV at the same time. I can't believe that within the first 14 seconds, a lot needs to be explained. Yes, we live in a time of progressiveness to the point that it is destroying many countries. We have too much progressiveness. You may be happy of having the first pl black president, but what did he do to our country? We are supposed to judge him by his actions and duties to the country. Not only he didn't improve our country, but he also made things worse. He had made racial tensions and relations worse since 2014. 
despite claiming we live in a post-racial country by supporting Black Lives Matter. And before anyone tries to misunderstand me or even strawman me, I am referring to the organization, not the movement. It is not racist to call out the organization by itself. Obama also did pass the Affordable Care Act, which had led to increasing health care costs, did not acknowledge that the religion of Islam is the cause of many worldwide terrorism, supported the university protests of November 2015, continued to pass more regulations on the economy, which has led to a growing burden on small businesses, and continued to pander to identity politics. This point on him being the first black president is moot. We, the people, the more rational kind, will judge him as a bad president. He did screw all to improve the country. Here too, or regarding to gay marriage, what the Supreme Court did outlandishly was actually unconstitutional. The ruling actually violated the Tenth Amendment that states, The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. In other words, since when gay marriage is told by the Constitution? Nowhere. If this issue is too great and is not stated by the Constitution, then the Tenth Amendment is invoked. Therefore, it is an issue that should have been up to the states, not at the federal level. And for folks that will end up strawmanning me again, I do support gay rights and gay marriages, but the sake of the LGBT community has gone so far that progressives are now supporting pedophilia and government forcing churches and businesses to pander with these progressives. Yes, this was hard to explain. As for the Asian comedies, I really don't give a damn about it, so let's move on. But recently, I asked a friend. Hey, do you know a good masseuse? Oh, correction, massage therapist. Masseuse is offensive. Masseuse is offensive? But the literal dictionary definition is a female massage therapist. Well, it has sexual connotations, so massage therapists are trying to abolish the word. <sighs> okay. Um, so what? That word is still used colloquially or in slang. Those are just connotations. I personally use different words of occupational roles depending on the gender simply to avoid confusion unless when I'm referring to the occupation collectively. For example, I still use the word voice actress when referring to a female voice actor and voice actor when referring to a male one. In the plural, I say actors. This does not mean I have gender bias. It is just to make things clear. I even use the word he in the generic sense, which has been in use for centuries, though I still sometimes use they singularly, and that has also been in use since the Middle Ages. But I don't like how we have to be politically correct in replacing he with they, as that will lead to awkwardness, and now hundreds of pronouns over non-existent genders. Also, here to the word masseuse, there is also a male counterpart called the masseur, which is basically the male version of masseuse. I am not certain if there are sexual connotations. If there are, that is most likely referring to a homosexual. And to be honest, my first thought was, oh my god. You know, another word that I can't use. Another term that's now offensive to people. I shall skip that. It straightforwardly speaks for itself. I've already stopped using my prop guns because of all the senseless gun violence happening in America. This is not as easy to do VFX-wise. <sighs> Maybe I'll do this instead. The gun violence is due to not only strict gun laws in some states. With gun laws, those laws actually prevent law-abiding citizens from owning firearms to defend themselves. Chicago also has a problem 
with gun violence because blacks commit more crime per capita than whites, according to statistics. The black community there is very dysfunctional. I shall leave that with a user named Live Life and a video from Devil's Advocate on why he had voted for Trump and hates Obama for making the black community worse. Links in the description for anyone who are not familiar. As for those gun control laws, those laws do not stop people from getting them illegally. They don't care about the law. Then I realized, who cares what I think? Who cares that I'm slightly inconvenienced by someone else's plight? Massage therapists do me a great service that I appreciate. Why am I so annoyed that I have to say three extra syllables to be respectful to them? At this stound, I have no idea what the hell is she talking about. Can anyone respond to me about that? I can't seem to think of an opinion. I will take either a comment or, or a response video. I am still learning. You know, we stopped using gay as a synonym to lame, and pussy or like a girl as equivalents to coward or weak. And we nixed saying retarded when describing people or situations because we realized that's fucked up. Words and insults do change over time, either naturally or because of political correctness. One byword would be the word gay. The word gay originally meant happy. It was then used to mean sexually promiscuous, then from prison slang of the early 20th century, gay cat to mean homosexual, at the same time also meaning hobo or bum. Then it solidified as homosexual in general. O'Connell was right, in which the word gay also meant stupid or lame, but that came out of the 90s and it is slowly falling out of style, either because of political correctness or a natural evolution. I still use gay to mean stupid sometimes. As for, pardon my French, pussy, um, that still is in use to mean weak, along with the weaker form, wuss. As for retarded, I still hear that sometimes that you may be right. However, a new insult has been emerging and it was very recent. Autistic. I once discussed about this in my first live stream about how the insult autistic is rising yet retarded slowly falling out of style. I'm autistic myself, as in having the disability, not the insult. Akana, you do realize that by replacing a word that was once all right with a politically correct term, later people will think the new word is offensive. That is why words do not have any power by themselves. Offense is taken, not given. You know, I think Sarah Silverman put it best when she said that young people are always on the right side of history. Because we have to learn how to adapt, how to change, and how to shift our words. Because our words have power. You have just cited a quote from Sarah frickin' Silverman. While I liked her as Ruth, one of the characters from Seth MacFarlane's A Million Ways to Die in the West, she has fallen from grace as a comedian once she has delved herself into identity politics and political correctness. However, I'm not going to dismiss Sil Silverman as a person, but your argument falls flat for two reasons with the second explained later. The first is that the quote you cited by itself weakens your argument by committing several logical fallacies. The first is that you and Silverman committed appeal to novelty. Just because we live in recent times does not mean it is better. Though I don't know if Akana did actually commit this fallacy, so I shall be happy to be corrected. At the same time, you and Silverman committed chronological snobbery, which is similar to appeal to novelty, and is a form of the genetic fallacy. I'm sorry, but Silverman is a frickin' putz, and that fits her better because she is a Jew. Huh. No echo. Ah well.
Now, here comes the second reason why she falls flat, and it is on the part with the word young. Watch. And as much as we want to roll our eyes at whatever the newest outrage is, I think that the real sign of getting old is the unwillingness to learn. And this is where her argument falls flat further. She basically thinks that younger people are brighter than old people. Another appeal to novelty and more chronological snobbery. Akana, you do realize that saying young people are on the right side of history is fallacious. Just as fallacious as saying the phrase, it's the current year. That's committing chronological snobbery. It is also a form of committing the moralistic fallacy. Young people are more understanding of words. Therefore, they should be leading the world without the advice from older generations. Then, your argument has become an wholly obliterated thanks to the Trump election weeks later and the Brexit vote months earlier. The so-called young people, millennials, are making one of the most chaotic generations in recent times. And Akana, when you said the real sign of getting old is the unwillingness to learn, you are implying that young people are brighter than older people as they are willing to learn. That may be true in some circumstances, but as we can see throughout the mid-2010s, it is the younger generation that is unwilling to learn. By not willing to hear others' opinions. They will call people with opposing opinions different names, such as Nazi, alt-right, bigots, racists, sexists, and a few other words. They use those names to shut down conversation, especially on com college campuses and in countries that don't guarantee free speech, even in the U.S. where free speech is guaranteed. Thanks to the First Amendment, it has been eroding. In fact, according to the Peel Research Center, 40% of millennials support limiting free speech to spare the feelings of minorities. The survey goes back to November 20th of 2015, the month and the year when the Great Student Revolt, quote-unquote, happened where thousands of students protested nationwide because of so-called harmful opinions, with the worst cases being the University of Missouri and the University of Yale. This even happened months after the then-Republican candidate, Donald Trump, had been rising in the mainstream media. Do those students even realize that when there is such revolt over offensive speech due to the way they were raised, that will drive more people to support Trump? And look at what happened. Trump had won, and he has become a president. This has also driven a populist movement on the rise, judging from the Brexit campaign. Those students are nothing but putzes and bourgeois, pardon my French, Cunts that support more socialism. And if any progressive other than Akana respond to me that I am strawmanning the protests against Brexit and Trump, even though I am not a fan of Trump, if you use sophistry on me and deem the evidence as fake news, please screw off. The video evidence is freaking obvious. Now, about this survey, I am rather confused about the part where it says that people with less than a high education are more likely in favor of restricting free speech while those who have gone to college are less likely to support free speech. And that is only in the US. Can someone explain this anomaly? As for getting old, um, you do realize that you basically disrespected the older generations that had soldiers fighting for their and their children's freedom, including yours. And my apologies for explaining this awkwardly. As for the millennials, I'm aware that there are people from older generations participating in this, but this generation is screwed up. 
thanks to decades of identity politics. By the way, you're completely wrong by saying that young people is on the right side of history. Why? For there is a rising number of millennials that are speaking out against the authoritarianism of political correctness. This is why I subtitled my response as, The wrong foretelling has come. You would expect that almost all of the younger generation would be on the right side of history, quote unquote. However, you have underreckoned the millennials that are opposing the so-called right side of history. People such as myself and others whom I shan't name them in respect of them are going against the establishment that you are a part of. And even then, we politely disagree with each other. Now, Mademoiselle Akana, I need to be clear that I will forgive you and respect you if you acknowledge that you are simply misguided. If not, then I will defend your opinions, though in as much as I can tell, your positions seem to be backed by sophistry. Oh, and one more fallacy committed by that quote itself, and the reason why had already been explained in the last few minutes. Nonetheless, I am not done yet. I'm sorry, Prop Gun. But I have to be a responsible adult now. We've been through some good times. I love you. I don't know how is this supporting your argument, so I shall dismiss it as a non sequitur. But of course, there's always going to be people who take it just a little too far. The extremists. Hey, uh, what do you want me to do with your phone? Oh, uh, you can just put it on the counter. It? Hmm? Don't assume to know your phone's gender. <laughs> but it's an inanimate object. I mean, it's not even like a robot with AI or anything. <laughs> there you go again. Assuming that your phone is non-gender, non-binary, non-sentient. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is too much. You, you're too PC. This is where I draw the line. This is an argument to moderation, also known as the golden mean fallacy. Just because you acknowledge that too much political correctness is bad does not mean political correctness in moderation is good either. In fact, I can't believe you acknowledge that calling an object by a pro proper pronoun is bull crap. But you must realize that genders other than male and female are bull crap also. There are only two genders proven by science, and that is all I'm going to say about this as I don't wish to make a straw man out of this. I'm Anna Akana. Stay awesome, Gotham. Hi, I'm Anna Akana, and I'm here to help women everywhere not get raped. Because it's totally our responsibility, right? The oh, fuck. This is gonna be one of those feminists who actually think she's funny, isn't it? The best form of rape prevention is to assimilate yourself into society as a man. Right, because women don't rape even though they're about half of the perpetrators. Now I know what you're thinking. Anna, rape does not just apply to women. This is true. So to ensure the safety of your butt, spread a rumor that you yourself are a rapist so other rapists will see you as a colleague. Hey fellas, how's them rapes looking lately? <sighs> Why do they always try to act like they're funny? Hey Anna, here's a tip. If you want to blend in with the rapist, you don't have to act like a man, just show them this. Rape you with this question. Oh, which oh. brings my answer to his question. I'd rape someone. You'd rape someone? Maybe, I've always thought it was fun. To, because I feel like I never could physically overpower someone and rape them. And I feel like you'd have to give a guy Viagra in order to rape them anyway. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm throwing it back a little bit. Well, because, okay, so I've thought this out. So if you- if, <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they'll accept you as one of their own without hesitation. What? Yeah, you getting any good rapes, dog? Yeah, we're busy right now. Yeah. Busy yeah. thinking about the rape. Okay, we gotta get... Hey guys, oh, come on, bro! Rape, give me some rape, rape tips! Yeah. Okay, Anna, let's get this out of the way before we go on. 
Let me explain to you why none of this is actually funny. You see, comedy is based off of misdirection and surprise. It's about taking people's expectations and turning them upside down. Now, in your case, none of this is surprising. This is just a typical BS made slightly more exaggerated by feminists. It's exactly what most people would expect from someone like you, and because people know because people know that it's an accurate reflection of how you think, which means that this is essentially self-parody with no self-awareness of that fact, which doesn't make it funny, it makes it psychologically disturbing. Which is the other problem with this. The fact that on some level, you really mean this. See, because I'm black, when I tell a nigger joke, there is no reason for anyone to expect racist intent behind it, as it's highly unlikely that I have a racist bias against black people. It's not impossible, but it's unlikely. So when I do it, the joke is funny. If a KKK member told the same joke, it would not be funny, because it's coming from a source that possesses ignorance and bigotry towards black people. So the joke is just racist and bigoted and is only funny to other racists and bigots. Since you are a sexist bigot who displays misandry and openly fantasizes about raping men, it's not funny when you try to portray men as rapists because it comes from a clear place of ignorance and bigotry. That's why for normal people watching this stuff, that's why for normal people watching this stuff, what you're doing is cringe-inducing. Okay? Good. Now let's move on. So this is something that's been on my mind, but I was like, maybe I would. Maybe if crime was good for 12 hours, I'd go out and I'd try and see if I could successfully okay. rape a man. So let me let me um, push back a little bit and Ooh. clarify Shane's question and say that I think he is saying that the crimes you commit would be legal. It doesn't mean they'd be safe. It doesn't mean that like... All right, here's the thing. If you're a woman and you're going to go out and rape someone, you risk getting getting raped. getting raped back or getting the shit beat out of you. He's not saying those things aren't possible. He's just saying it's not illegal. Yeah, but I mean, he's saying... And you're still sticking with you'd go and rape a pizza man. Well, not necessarily a pizza man. Like, I don't know. It would depend. Like, uh, who would I go rape? I don't know. Some celebrity, I guess. Oh. Try to attack them. No, because I can't rape you because you'd be willing. Has to be unwilling for rape. Okay. Because I've had such a fear of it that I feel like to impose it upon someone would be very psychologically fulfilling. Okay, so <laughs> in this hypothetical scenario. Oh yeah, and there's the hypocrisy thing too. Our new solution is to hire bodyguards. Will you protect me from rape? Yes, ma'am. We will. But will you rape me? Yes, ma'am. We will. I'm just gonna. Remember women, all men everywhere will rape you. Even if you think they won't, they will. Even if they're your friends, your family, or if you're in a public place, you must be afraid of rape all the time because rape, 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 rapey rape. RAPE! Seriously, Anna, where exactly did you get this idea that all men are just waiting around to rape you if only they could get the chance? Rape you with this question. Oh, which oh. brings my answer to his question. I'd rape someone. You'd rape someone? Maybe. I've always thought it was fun to... Because I feel like I never could physically. Oh, right. We've been conditioned our whole lives to not get raped. My dad put me in martial arts. My mom gives me knives and pepper spray. And despite the fact that I like that stuff, it's mostly for anti-rape. We're told by society, never walk alone at night. Never walk down an alleyway. If you think you're being followed, make three right turns. Because that means they just went in a circle. Never run upstairs if you're being chased, because then you can get trapped. Don't stop if you see a car seat on the side of the road. Hey, here's some nail polish that'll help you identify date rape drugs. Sport this adorable yet fierce keychain so you can gouge someone's eyes out. And on and on and on. <sighs> Yeah, who the hell does society think it is, giving us advice on how to avoid bad situations and look after ourselves? Where does it get the fucking nerve? You know what would be better? Yes, I do, but I'm guessing that you're going to say something a lot stupider than what I was thinking. If we just taught young boys that rape isn't even an option. Fuck you, you sociopathic bimbo. Seriously, who the fuck do you believe thinks rape is a legitimate option?
much, much more difficult for a woman to rape a man. And I have thought of this before when I was like eight and I loved Leonardo DiCaprio and the possibility that we'd never be together occurred to me. So I'm just sad. Oh, right. You know, Anna, seeing as how I can pretty much guarantee you that you would never see a man salivating publicly about raping a woman like this, combined with the fact that feminists try to constantly redefine rape to make the rape of a man almost impossible, especially when done by a woman, in fact, taking into consideration the complete lack of compassion or caring that you and apparently many women feel towards male victims, if any sex needs to learn about not committing rape, it's not mine. By the way, that guy that she's talking to, the one who keeps looking at her like a panicked deer in the headlights, that guy was, to my knowledge, her boyfriend at the time. So watch his face as he starts to realize the kind of warped psychopath he's sleeping next to at night. Anna's answer. And let's see how it comes across. <laughs> no, that would okay. Be terrible. If crime were legal, you know what? I'd go out and rape someone. Let's see. I'd I'd have to give him a roofie to really, you oh, know, this is gay rape. To really trick a trick trick her in. No, it's I don't want to overpower a woman. You said give him a roofie. No, <laughs> so I, like, oh, I said oh, sorry. God. I said give them a roofie. <laughs> okay. I'd have to give. A, fine, I'll say her, not them. I'd have to give her a roofie, you know, because I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to fight with her. I want her to just be limp. And then I would, you know, proceed to rape her because that it, that makes me feel empowered. No, that is that's not my what answer. I said. And it's based on a play I saw. <laughs> if we would stop victim shaming and slut shaming. Victim shaming. Okay. I'm probably wasting my time trying to explain this to someone like you, but let's give it a go. Let's say that there was a place near my house called Beat a Nigger Lane. Now, I would never go for a walk down Beat a Nigger Lane because, unsurprisingly, something bad might happen to me. Now, if I were to go for a walk down Beat a Nigger Lane for some reason and I received the obvious beating, that would not be my fault per se. However, that does not mean that had I not gone down Beat a Nigger Lane in, lane in the first place, that the beating would not have occurred. You see, the actions that I take and the decisions that I make have consequences, both positive and negative. As a moral agent, I have to accept my share of the responsibility for the outcomes of those choices. I knew that going that way would increase my risk of danger, but I did it anyways. It's not my fault that I got beaten, but it is partly my responsibility. Which is what you are calling victim shaming, or as most others would call it, being a fucking adult and excusing a rapist because of the clothes his victim wore or because they were on a date. Because I am seriously so fucking tired of being responsible for not getting raped. Well, that's fine that you feel tired of being responsible. If you want to behave like a child, that's perfectly fine. Just don't be expecting not to be treated like one. See, there's one of your two core problems. You want everyone else to be responsible for you, and it takes a very special level of narcissism and entitlement for that. You want all of the rest of the world to adjust itself just so that you feel safer because you don't want to take action yourself, even though you're not really in much real danger of ever being raped. In fact, you're far more likely to have your house catch on fire and burn down or be hit by a car, but I'm guessing that you don't spend all of your time worrying about those things. Maybe if you didn't spend all your time surrounded by people who are trying to scream rape and artificially inflate rape victims, it might work out better for you. Just saying. Fucking hypocrite. Hi, I'm Anna Akana, and I'm here to help women everywhere not get raped. Because it's totally our responsibility, right? It really is as stupid as saying, yeah, don't teach me to lock my doors, teach them not to steal. It's just so stupid, it's not productive. There is an optimum line here, somewhere between assuming all men are rapists and should never be trusted under any circumstances, and 100% trusting every man that you meet to absolutely respect your personal desires. Every time I hear such stories, it's clear that some, if not many, of these traumatic instances could have been avoided if many of these young girls had been given a simple heads up about risk minimization, about predator avoidance, and so on. Things that the Rape Crisis Centre of England and Wales don't even seem to think was worth mentioning. You know, it's 
kind of like reading up about mountain lions before heading into an environment where you know there are such predators. I would add one more thing. The people who have been badly scarred by such events are probably not the best people to give advice on such subjects, as they are more likely to disproportionately represent the danger. Let's be real. Boy meets girl, and after a while, they ride off into the sunset is a happy ending that puts a smile on everyone's face. And trust is a big part of that happy ending. Telling young women that they should be paranoid that all men that they meet are potential rapists and should never be trusted is not something that's going to increase the number of happy boy meets happy girl and ride off into the sunset hand in hand. Now, accurately assessing a hazard does not mean you will never experience that danger. You can minimize your chances of getting raped, do everything that you can to minimize your chances of getting raped and still get raped. You can minimize your chances of being killed and eaten in the wild, but still get killed and eaten. But it will minimize your chances of being in such a situation, while allowing you the greatest chances of achieving your desires. For comparison, when I go into the wilderness, I know there are predators there. It's just an inherent risk that I incur when I enter that environment. But for the wonders that I have seen, for the joys that I have experienced, it's a gamble that I happily accept. Having said that, it would just be stupid of me, in the extreme, knowing that there are such predators in this environment, to not minimize my chances of becoming a victim. Or maybe a more simple analogy, I lock my windows for security. But to brick them up for complete security would be dumb as it would just rob me of the pleasure of living in this place. The best form of rape prevention is to assimilate yourself into society as a man. Now I know what you're thinking. Anna, rape does not just apply to women. This is true. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have to stop you there. All right, Anna, because you're, you're going full batshit crazy here. First off, more men are raped in the U.S. than women. Fact. Now, a lot of that has to do with prison, but who gives a shit? If you're going to victim blame and say, well, they put themselves there, or they deserve it, or etc., etc., you're victim blaming. Don't do that shit. So, more men are raped in the U.S. than women. So, yeah, men definitely get raped. And to say that, oh, well just try to go up to rapists. Do you think rapists are people who are like standing on a corner discussing things together? People who commit rape are criminals of the highest class. They're like murderers or people who abduct children, things like that. They, they do not hang out with each other. So so to ensure the safety of your butt, spread a rumor that you yourself are a rapist, so other rapists will see you as a colleague. I, 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 I can't tell if this is serious or if it's satire. Knowing your past stuff, I'm afraid it's serious. So understand that, no, that won't help at all. Because the world isn't a cartoon. The world is not a cartoon. Hey fellas, how them rapes looking lately? What? Yeah, you getting any good rapes, dog? Yeah, we're busy right now. Yeah. Busy yeah. thinking about the rape. Okay, we gotta get, we hey guys, come I can't tell you the number of times I have had people tell me that they've been offended by rape jokes and things like this. But this is not like a rape joke. This is taking rape and mocking it. Basically treating it as if it, it really isn't an issue and you can just mock it and it's not even done it's not even funny I mean I don't find it funny and sense of humor is subjective so maybe there are maybe there's somebody out there who actually thinks that this is funny but you're making light of a really horrible t thing and you're doing it in a way that isn't even entertaining it isn't it doesn't push any boundaries you're just reinforcing basic old myths. Oh, bro, give me some rape tips, dog. I just want to have rape from you. Yo, we're friends, dog. Here, we'll give you that. No, no. 
if you absolutely cannot pretend to be a man facading as a rapist, another expensive and fear-induced solution is to hire bodyguards. Will you protect me from rape? Yes, ma'am. We will. But will you rape me? Yes, ma'am. We will. I'm just gonna call 911 really quick. If your bodyguards aren't trustworthy, protect yourself the old American way. Excuse me, do you have the time? No, I don't have the time for rape. I'm not even going to touch the bodyguards thing because that's just sexist to think that you hire professional bodyguards and they would harm you. Like, that's just... So, that's so delusional, it doesn't merit a response. And shooting a guy who obviously isn't a threat to you, and then saying, well, I don't have time for rape, again, it's not funny. You're just, you're just re-enabling this stereotype that all men are threats, and hey, if somebody, you know, shows up at your door, you don't know who they are, and they're asking you a question, you can shoot them and then laugh about it later. Not okay, Anna. You're really, really making this horrible. We've been conditioned our whole lives to not get raped. My dad put me in martial arts. My mom gives me knives and pepper spray. And despite the fact that I like that stuff, it's mostly for anti-rape. We're told by society, never walk alone at night. Never walk down an alleyway. If you think you're being followed, make three right turns. Because that means they just went in a circle. Everything, everything you have just mentioned are good tools for anyone, male or female, to use to protect themselves, not just against rape, but against mugging, against assault, and various other things. You, you treat basic, like, martial arts, or having a weapon to protect yourself with, or having mace or pepper spray or something like that, you, you treat that as, it's like, it's a comedic response, and it's a it's a it's male response like oh you know if if this world was run by women we wouldn't if we rape wouldn't exist i'm not even going to go into women and how they rape but it's just fucking ridiculous let's keep watching Never run upstairs if you're being chased, because then you can get trapped. Don't stop if you see a car seat on the side of the road. Hey, here's some nail polish that'll help you identify date rape drugs. Sport this adorable yet fierce keychain so you can gouge someone's eyes out. And on and on and on. You know what would be better? If we just taught young boys that rape isn't even an option. This argument is the most sexist argument out there. That unless boys are told not to rape someone, they will, unless they're taught not to, they'll think it's an option. Somebody who rapes somebody is, there's something wrong with them. It's not that they were raised incorrectly, that, that actually could, societal things could have something to do with it, but that there's something fundamentally wrong with that person, which is why they would do something that most people find absolutely deplorable. And you are treating this as if, well, all we really need to do, I mean, fuck, we've been dealing with this for fucking millennia, but all we need to do is just teach a class, and the problem will be solved. How's that teaching people not to murder and steal thing going for you, huh? If we would stop victim shaming and slut shaming and excusing a rapist because of the clothes his victim wore or because they were on a date, because I am seriously so fucking tired of being responsible for not getting raped. Well then, as Thunderfoot said earlier, you can go ahead and instead of locking your window, just brick it up. Because it sounds like you're not capable of being a responsible adult and taking care of yourself. Because part of being an adult is being responsible for yourself. I was jumped by around six or seven people. And this was about two or three years ago. I was beaten very, very badly, and I, I still worry about that. Every time I go out, I worry about being jumped, I worry about, but it's a risk I take. Now, do I have preventative measures? Yes. There are things that I take with me. Uh, I've studied martial arts. 
the things that you were mentioning earlier that you were kind of mocking, those are things that, yeah, I actually do use and most educated, responsible adults use because this idea of I'm not going to take care of myself, it's everyone else's job to make sure that I'm, I'm comfy and my life is perfect is just crazy. How can you claim to be an adult but at the same time say, you know what, I'm sick of having to prevent something that everyone else has to prevent too. You're not special, you're not different. And time and time again, people have said, I have said, professionals have said, rape is, is, is a horrible crime, but it is not something you simply teach away. It is something that you, like murder and molestation and things like that, those are things that you just don't, you don't teach away because there's something wrong with the individual who's doing them. And it's not like you can just go, I'm so sick of this, I'm not going to protect myself anymore. And then if something happens to you, blame everyone but yourself. Because that's not victim blaming. If, if you leave your car unlocked and your windows down in, in a parking lot at a mall and you come back and your stereo has been ripped out and anything of value has been taken, the first thing you should do is not alert to the police and say, how, how dare this happen? I should be able to leave my car unlocked with my windows down in a parking lot because theft is illegal. And I'm sick of having to worry about protecting my things, so I'm just going to do whatever I want and expect the people around me to be good, responsible adults as well. Well, unfortunately, not everyone is. Some people are sociopaths, some people are psychopaths, some people just have a lot of shit wrong with them. So I'm sorry that you're tired of being an adult, but grow the fuck up and take some responsibility for your life. So as you may remember, I came out as bisexual last year. And since then, I have been dating women. And what I found very fascinating is that the more I date women, the more I find myself understanding heterosexual men. Let me explain. Exhibit A. I was on a first date with a girl, who asked me out by the way, this is relevant, because when the check came, she never once made a move to pay. Not even like the fake, let me reach for my purse move. And though I don't mind paying on a date, part of me felt like, you know, the offer would have been nice. I was also a little taken aback that she didn't even say thank you. And I never heard from her again. It really made me feel like she just asked me out so she could have a free dinner. And the moment I thought that, I was like, oh my God, I sound like all of my guy friends right now. And my argument against why guys should pay for dates has always been like, look, girls take hours to get ready. Our investment is looking really nice for you. Makeup, clothes, that costs money too. Nah, weak argument, because y'all do that anyway, regardless of the circumstances. But we were both girls in this situation. We both took hours to get ready, so I definitely felt slighted. Exhibit B. On another date, I went back to a girl's house, and I ended up making friends with her cat. That's not a pun. I'm talking about her literal, actual animal. And she said, Wow, my cat never likes anyone. I better go out and buy a wedding dress. <laughs> And again, I felt like I got some serious perspective. I have been guilty of making these kinds of jokes on dates with men. I never really thought anything of it. I was just being silly. But then when I was on the receiving end of it, I suddenly understood the panic. And finally, exhibit C. One girl invited me back into her house, and her specific words were, Do you want to come in and make out? What? What? You let me know when that play has ever worked for a guy in this Me Too climate, please. Obviously, I'm like, yeah, you're really pretty. I want to press my face to yours. But then when we got there, we both just sat on the couch and she talked till like 3 a.m. And I was like, yo girl, I gotta wake up at like 6 a.m. I was told there would be kisses here. There are no kisses. And like, look, I, I don't want to sound like an asshole. Like, I don't mind talking. I love talking. But she could have said, uh, do you want to come in and just talk? And I would have had totally different expectations for the evening. You know, finally I started 
falling asleep and I was like, hey, I gotta go. And I gave her one kiss and, and left. And I felt sad that the amount of kisses promised did not equal the amount of kisses delivered. And once again, I felt like a dude who was upset that I did not receive the expected physical kisses I was promised. And I wanted to talk about this because I felt like this has really been expanding my perspective when it comes to dating. I finally understand a lot of the complaints my male friends have about dating that I admit I would usually dismiss. But now I really get it when they say, Dating is just so expensive, man. Sometimes I feel like a girl doesn't even like me for me. She just wants, like, a boyfriend. I wish it were more socially expected to go Dutch on the first few dates, but you're like a jerk if you even suggest it. And any experience that expands your compassion and understanding is one that I think is worthy of sharing. Yo, so I gotta give props when props is due. So check this out. I never, ever, 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 ever thought I'd ever see anything like what you just watched. I probably have to say that this is at least a massive step forward when it comes to basic understanding of men in the dating world and how much tougher it is for us. Like, first off, I got to give it up to homegirl for coming out and sharing her personal business with millions around the world, including her subscribers. Secondly, I feel like if I was in her position, I would have kept that shit to myself. Homegirl is definitely braver than I could ever be. And clearly, she's been in the YouTube game for a minute, so she's obviously holding her own with her channel. I can't even front. After watching this post, I most definitely hit that subscribe button only because I was feeling how her head was sitting. Straight up. It looks like she could be a part of the so very, very few women who are part of the exception to the rule. But don't get it twisted, though, because women are still professional chameleons, especially in front of the camera. So... I am aware uh, that this could be part of some type of, uh, you know, deception in a ways. But in any event, homegirl finally hit the shit on the head with her post. And what is the most interesting thing is, in my mind, was despite her having her guy friends in her ear who've been saying this shit from time, it never registered in her mind because it's simply a problem for men, not women. So why would women want to pay attention to that anyway? Women at the end of the day pretty much operate on a service to self mentality and seldom, if ever, bother to consider the plight men face all day or er day in the dating world, which is so fucking crazy to me because they are constantly riding this equality wave up and down society. So here's my thing, which will probably fuck with my head until I'm dead. Like I mentioned earlier, that her guy friends would be complaining to her about how tough it is and how many times they've been done wrong in the dating game. It's interesting because men, for the most part, communicate using logic and rationality, which is pretty much basically goes one plus one equals two logic base. And for some unexplainable reason, women can't seem to quite comprehend or understand this. This is why I believe things will continue to get worse because of this massive break in communication. I straight up just don't get it. Like, even now, still talking about this at this moment makes my brain hurt because it had to take a woman combined with her sexual orientation along with her having to date women for her to be struck with this epiphany and eventually come to the conclusion that the game isn't really fair for men at the end of the day, which to me is bittersweet. It wasn't just a simple logic that could work in convincing women to see our point of view, but an actual first-hand experience dealing with her own to realize what the fuck is going on here. I'm sorry if I sound kind of frustrated at this post, but I don't know, man, because I create content for my channel and my point of view gun is loaded with fact bullets and set to maximum, but I still cannot penetrate the woman's bulletproof feminist vest. So... What do we men got to do then? Wait for women to start dating each other to finally see this shit? Because our math logic ain't working. For real though, I actually had to thank God her channel wasn't as small as mine. Number one, for her message to get across. And another thanks for the fact that she's female with the majority of her audience. I'm thinking probably is like 98% female themselves, which is in the millions, by the way, who at least viewed her message, which is massive. Her post 
is well over a million views. And when I skimmed her comment section, it was scattered with a few women here and there validating her sentiment in her post, which at the least has planted that seed for self-reflection for the small faction of women out there who have open minds and are willing to take heed to her message and hopefully, just hopefully, internalize her message. For that, Anna, I want to sincerely thank you for your post. You honestly have no idea how this helps us out as men and with this insight that you've spread. Because of that, at the least, the message is coming from their own, meaning women, and also your language, again meaning women, which I believe is what is definitely missing when it comes to subjects like this. I feel like as a guy, my attempts trying to instill this information to women with the content of my channel falls upon deaf ears for whatever millions of reasons there may be. At the end of the day, I'm just a guy preaching some bullshit that seems to hit with the male audience, whereas my target is female. And the most irritating thing for me is that if my channel was dedicated to being like a makeup tutorial, even as a guy, I'd probably have over a million female subscribers by now.